Howdy all, grab yourselves a beer, it's time to talk Path of Exile. Uh, Synthesis League spoilers are coming out as the development team start to try to build some hype for the new league. Uh, it's launching on the 8th of March. And today, uh, Bex, who's the community manager for Grinding Gear Games, provided some information on one important feature for the new league, which is the upcoming Zana mods. Z uh, this is going to be the first of two videos that I make on this topic. Uh, the first one is going to look at what Zana mods are and how you might choose to use them. It's mostly aimed at people that are somewhat beginners to the Atlas of Worlds content in Path of Exile. You can safely skip this video if you have already got a character to level 85 or further uh, in, in a previous league. The second video is going to look at the str strategies for using these different um, Atlas modifiers that are available, uh, when you might choose to use each of them, why, which ones I think are not worth using at all. So this first one looks at, is going to be looking at just the uh, decisions of using the, uh, these modifiers, why you might use them, and what each one of them does. So when you get when you complete Zana's first quest, so you've killed Katava at the end of Act Ten, you've unlocked the map device. And you've gone and you've talked to Zana in the uh, Templar, uh, in the Templar lab uh, laboratory at the sort of end of the game in in Act Eleven in the epilogue. Um, she'll give you a first quest to just go into a map, and when you've done that, she will then introduce you to the Atlas of Worlds, and you'll unlock the personal map device. The personal map device lets you fire up. Um, additional uh, like additional modifiers on any map that you run. So its interface will look somewhat like this, except not quite a, uh, not quite as long. Uh, you'll put your map in in one of these four blocks. You have spaces for scarabs, for um, sacrifice fragments, or things like that to put in the other three uh, if you want to juice up a map. And then you will select one of these options. Uh, fair warning, it will not start with 8% increased item quantity, it will start lower. Um, it'll actually start with just 1 or 2%, but then that'll increase as you um, level up your map device by completing more and more of Zana's quest chain. However, that's the default choice. That doesn't cost you anything, that is just something you can always do. You'll have the option of selecting various mods that you can add to a map. Um, all of them cost a certain amount of Chaos Orbs, uh, varying from just one Chaos Orb for, for one of the options, all the way up to 15 for this one here, the, uh, make, uh, for the Elder version, so for el uh, the Elder bonus. Um, all of the, what these do is they will add additional difficulty and unique rewards to your map. Uh, and they vary, so this is just going to go through each of them and give you a heads up as to what to expect. Fortune favors the brave, I'll cover quickly, although in general you probably won't use this very much. You will unlock the later options one by one as you progress through through the uh, Zana's, Zana's uh, extensive storyline. So firstly, you will explore Shaper influence maps, then you will explore Elder influence maps and start collecting Zana's, uh, uh, sorry, not Zana's memory fragments, the Shaper's memory fragments. Uh, then once you've completed the exploration phase, you'll then battle the Elder on a red map. And once you've killed the Elder in his hardest mode on a red map, uh, you will then encounter the Shaper, you go and beat, uh, beat the shit out of the Shaper, learn quite a bit about his history in the process, and then you and the Shaper will team up to fight the Elder at the centre of the Atlas, and there's sort of a major plot point that you can um, get to yourself, I won't spoil that here. Um, but something sort of goes wrong with that fight, and that is the, I guess, the final, the final um, part of Zana's storyline. The further you get through this storyline, up to the point of um, beating up the Shaper at the center of the Atlas, uh, the more of these options you will unlock. So, Fortune Favors the Brave gives you a random option from the, um, certainly from, from the League options, so Nemesis, Bloodlines, Ambush, Essence, Breach, Harbinger, and beyond. It costs three Chaos Orbs, and generally players don't use it very much because you lose the, you have the opportunity cost of losing out on the uh, free increased item quantity that you get uh, just by default with the map device. You can't use any of the uh, level of the level enhancing or map changing um, options, 
And generally, if you're going to want to run Nemesis, Bloodlines, Ambush, Essence, Breach, Harbinger, or Beyond, it's usually because you're chasing a specific reward from one of them, uh, not that you just want to add more monsters to the map. So that's what Fortune Favors the Brave does, and I don't generally um, think you'll be using it very much. Alternate of the same tier uh, is an option that when you put a rare map in the Atlas and that map is either a white map or a yellow map, so it is tier 1 through tier 10 inclusive, this will uh, activate the map as though you had also used a Horizon Orb on it. So what that means is that if you've put in, say, a tier 4 beach map, it will then give you... Uh, it will instead, it will consume your beach map, your rare beach map, and then it will create portals to a map that is not beach, but is tier 4. This can be really useful when you're um, just sort of getting started on filling out the atlas and you're just trying to um, do as many different maps in different areas of the atlas as you can. So it's a very useful mod, um, but that's what it does. Fair warning, it will randomize the mods on the map. So if you're playing a build, for instance, that cannot handle Elemental Reflect and you put a map in very carefully, choosing a map that does not have Elemental Reflect and you um, use this mod, you could get surprised by uh, going in there and finding out, oh hell, this is an Elemental Reflect map. Make very certain that if you're running this, that you have, ch uh, if you're running a map with this option, that you check before you go, uh, before you actually go into the zone, to make certain that you haven't, uh, that it doesn't have um, elemental reflect or some mod that your build can't do. You can do that by just walking in, and during the grace period, that's the 30 seconds uh, before you, uh, 30 seconds after you zone into the map, you're invulnerable as long as you don't uh, move or attack. So you can go in, you can press tab to bring up the uh, map details and just check what the mods are. If it's got a map mod that will kill you in a fight, then unfortunately you have wasted your map. Um, however, this is still worth using. The next three options are all similar, but um, in, in a lot of ways a bit more juicy than that, uh, than that option. So the alternate of the same tier costs one Chaos Orb plus consumes your map. The shaped options, there's one for tier 1 to 5 and there's one for tier 1 to 10, although in practice you'd only use it for a tier 6 to 10 map. Um, the, what these do is they consume your map as normal, but instead of opening a portal to a map that is of the tier of the map you put in, it'll open a, a portal a portals to a map that is five tiers higher. So if you put in a rare beach map, it will have to be a rare for this to work. Uh, instead of opening a tier four beach map that has level 71 monsters and level 71 loot, it will instead open a tier nine beach map which will have level uh, 76 monsters and level 76 loot. This is extremely useful when you have a surplus of tier 1 to 5 maps and you want to, uh, and you just don't have enough tier 6 to, uh, 6 to 10 maps to run them. Uh, you can then get some value out of your tier 5 maps by juicing them up to tier 10. Uh, generally, you will only use this on tier 5 maps and maybe tier 4 occasionally uh, because you'll find that by running these tier 9 and tier 10 zones, you will get a flood of, of tier 6, 7 and 8 maps that you can then run. Again, fair warning, it randomizes the mods and it can give you mods you can't beat. So have a look before, uh, walk in, check what's rolled up and then decide whether or, not you want to, uh, whether or not you want to proceed. Sometimes you will just have to say, I just wasted a rare beach map and I wasted two chaos orbs. I can't beat this map. I'm getting out of here. Shape tier 1 to 10 is something you'll unlock quite a bit later, and it does exactly the same thing, except it works on maps up to and including tier 10. So if you put a tier 10 um, arachnid nest map, I believe it is, it's either arachnid tomb or arachnid nest, nest that is tier 10, uh, it will jump it up to tier 15. This will then have the potential to drop tier 16 maps, which are the most valuable maps in the game. And so this is a really, really useful mod to use. It costs six Chaos Orbs a go, so it's not something that you can do uh, forever unless you're trading quite a bit. But it will really assist you in getting yourself um, access to more and more different maps. And Elder, uh, the Elder option 
upgrades a map all the way to tier 16. So this is, it doesn't matter what map you put in it, whether it's tier 1, whether it's a tier, tier 13 map to begin with, it'll jump up to tier 16. All the risks, all the rewards of a tier 16 map, and again, you have no control over the mods, sometimes you're going to get burnt. This is something you'll get very late. You'll only get this uh, as a you'll get this as a reward for killing the shaper after having already killed Red Elder's hard mode. So this is something that um, for a lot of players is un achieving this is somewhat of a whole of league goal. Uh, you know, it's something that you say at the start of the league. I'm going to aspire towards um, beating the shaper and unlocking my older orb as well as unlocking. This mod, uh, this mod on the map device. After this, we'll get to the league mods. Now, what these do, uh, we're currently going to go into the Synthesis League, and each league in Path of Exile's history has brought some unique encounters, many of which have remained in the game um, for some time, uh, you know, have remained in the game for since their inception in some toned-down format. So you'll notice that in today's game, the Delve League stays around, although Nico, instead of being in every zone, he's only in 12% of zones. But, uh, you know, you've still got the same mechanics. You find piles of sulfite poo on the ground, you interact with them, and you can then go to the mines. The leagues prior to Delve, generally, or prior to Delve and Incursion, generally had quite a bit smaller scope. Uh, they were when Grinding Gear Games was a smaller company, didn't have as much... Um, in the way of programming resources to put out. And so these often have a smaller impact on the game and the feel of the game than the Delve, you know, than for instance, the, the entire Delve mechanic. But there are some interesting things that these do. There's a whole series of unique items called, uh, generally referred to as time-worn uniques by players, which are unique items that arrived in one of these, in one of the leagues from Path of Exile's early history and then they were discontinued. They don't drop under normal circumstances anymore. And I'm just going to bring up the most uh, popular and most powerful of these on the Path of Exile wiki, which is the Headhunter Unique Belt. Headhunter is a belt that doesn't look particularly amazing at first until you actually get to play with it in practice. Uh, it's one of the most expensive items in the game for a reason. Uh, 25 to 40 maximum life because it's a leather belt. Adds quite a lot of strength, quite a lot of dexterity, quite a lot more life. But then it has two very special mods. Firstly, 20 to 30% increased damage with hits against rare monsters. This is great. Um, it's not some irreplaceable mod, but it does add a lot to your damage. But then there's the big one. When you kill a rare monster, you gain its modifiers for 20 seconds. Uh, these sorts of modifiers can often be utterly and completely ridiculous. Um, for example, one of them it, it will give you about it will give you an aura that is approximately three times stronger than the Val Haste uh, aura that you can you know that you can cast a limited number of times per map. Any, in any case, these are the Time Worn Uniques, and each of these is linked to the league that it originally came in. So, for instance, uh, Headhunter came originally in the Nemesis League, and if you run a zone, normally Headhunter cannot drop from any monsters in the game under normal circumstances, but if you run a zone with Zana's Nemesis modifier active, You'll have a chance. It's not a very good chance, but you will have a chance of any given monster that you kill dropping the Headhunter Unique Belt. It is still a Tier 1 Rarity Unique, so you will not see it often at all, but this will happen for a few lucky players throughout the league. In any case, uh, Nemesis, uh, what it does is it upgrades all of the monsters in the zone that are, that are rare, will have uh, there's there's normal rare monsters which are a yellowy colour, and then there's n uh, nemesis monsters, which have special mods like fractured, and will appear yellowy orange in gameplay. Uh, so there'll be an orange tinge to their uh, to their yellow aura that they have. These are nemesis rares. They will have some special mod that makes them considerably more dangerous than uh, ordinary rare monsters, 
but you will be used to these because you've been encountering them all through the story, all through the story content. Um, so every single rare monster will have a nemesis mod, uh, mod rather than it just being one rare monster out of every three. In addition, the zone will have additional rare monsters. Now this costs you two chaos orbs per run, and the appeal to running nemesis is first and foremost the chance to drop headhunter. Secondly, rare monsters drop more loot in general than um, than white monsters or even magic monsters. And so just having more of them on the map means that you will get... It, it, it acts as a multiplier to all of the loot that you'll pick up throughout the zone. So adding the nemesis option to your maps is something to consider. And I'll go through in the, uh, in the second video, the one about the strategies for using these mods. Um, I do think that this is going... that like without sort of stepping on the toes of that video, Nemesis is going to be something that people will be using a lot, and for good reason. However, keep in mind, you are sacrificing your baseline increased item quantity, uh, so that it's not free, it costs you the two Chaos Orbs, plus the opportunity cost of losing 1-8% to IIQ in the zone. Uh, so that's what Nemesis does. Bloodlines is similar, except it augments magic monsters. It will cause there to be an increased number of magic monsters on the map, uh, which generally appeals because a lot of your... basically the majority of plus one maps that you get. So when, when I say a plus one map, I mean if you're running a tier six map, uh, a tier seven is a plus one. It's one tier higher than the map you're currently in. If you're in a tier 13 map, then a, then a tier 14 drop is a plus one. Plus ones are very important to your map, your progress through the Atlas of Worlds and the Bloodlines mod will help you get more of them uh, because the majority of your plus ones will be dropped by magic monsters. Uh, it is... it just adds monsters. There's no special uniques that it adds. There, there are a couple of Bloodlines League specific uniques, but no one even remembers what they are because they weren't... they either... If them, when I say they weren't very good, that may be an exaggeration, but they weren't memorable, they weren't spectacular like Headhunter. So... That's the Bloodlines lead mechanic. Ambush. Ambush will add strong boxes onto the map. Uh, this is something that I may, uh, that I discussed quite a bit in a video that I made, uh, which is called an introduction to high investment mapping, which demonstrates the power that strong that adding strong boxes can have in conjunction with uh, cartographer sextants. The actual strong box loot might seem like the uh, might seem like the appeal to this mod to people, but it's actually the fact that it puts a lot more monsters in onto the map. Uh, they're concealed in the boxes, but there's a lot more monsters on the map. That's the reason people consider it. Without going into strategy too much, uh, ambush generally historically I believe it's added three or four strong boxes. Um, but that number is always subject to change. We'll find out for certain once the lead goes live. The Essence Modifier. Uh, you will have encountered throughout leveling um, several essences. I believe you'll encounter one Essence Trap monster, or one Essence Trapped pack of monsters approximately every sixth zone during the leveling experience. If you activate the Essence option for three Chaos Orbs on your map, uh, it will add three additional Essence packs. Historically, when this has existed before, it was only two. But um, community manager for GGG Bex did indicate that this has changed to three in this league. So if you're looking to get a lot of essences, this is something to consider. Um, and again, it's a few more monsters on it's a few more monsters on the map. Next up, we're starting to get to what I believe, and this hasn't been confirmed yet, but I believe that the further down the list you get, uh, the longer it will take you to unlock them. So the further into Zana's storyline you will need to be. So, I believe everything up to and including Essence, you'll probably have b about the time that you're, um, that you're getting to Tier 12 maps on the Atlas. Uh, Breach, Harbinger and Beyond might take you a bit longer, might require you to kill the Red Elder or uh, maybe even the Shaper. Breach, it will add one of those glowing purple hands on the map that you encounter uh, one in ten maps randomly. The Breach, uh, the breach option on the map device has historically added two additional breaches. These are particularly int uh, these are particularly important 
because they will unlock the... Uh, oh, when you kill the monsters in them, you will get your uh, Splinters of Chayola, splint Splinters of Ulnatol, which can then be upgraded through the Syndicate League content that's remaining around into some... Uh, what are effectively very, very, very high-level um, unique maps. So that's part of the appeal to Breach, and additionally, it's just an enormous amount of monsters, and it's a big adrenaline rush fighting them too. Uh, when you set off a Breach, uh, you will be you'll be trapped inside a purple circle that will expand rapidly and as it travels over the landscape it will reveal monsters that were hidden in another dimension. You'll then fight these monsters and it's a real adrenaline rush because those monsters will come at you very 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 fast. Fair warning on adding breaches to your map or even to uh, running breaches that you encounter in regular maps. Uh, they're an adrenaline rush for a reason. They are much 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 harder than anything else in the map. The next option is Harbinger. Uh, Harbingers don't occur in normal gameplay outside a couple of spaces like the Delve Mines and some of Zana's missions, the when you encounter her inside your maps. Um, this will add, I believe it's two, it may be three, uh, special magic monsters onto the map, uh, the Harbingers, which will then spawn enormous packs of monsters that will fight you. They'll have a couple of unique attacks, and these Harbinger packs will also be initially invulnerable for a very short period of time. So they'll start with 100% damage reduction, which will very, very rapidly fall away. This ensures that it's pretty much impossible to kill these packs within the first quarter of a second of their, of their lifespan, so they will definitely live long enough to, to counter-attack you. Uh, when you kill these, instead of dropping items or currency orbs, the actual main Harbinger itself, which will not fight you, it will just spawn monsters and then it will die when you kill the last one of these monsters, um, it will drop a large amount of currency shards on the, uh, on the ground, which these shards being 1 20th of various orbs. There's a couple of unique currencies that you can only realistically get through, the Har through fighting Harbingers. Uh, there's Orbs of Binding, which function as both an Orb of Alchemy and as a jewelers or uh, as enough jewelers or fusing orbs to transform the item into a four linked item these are extremely useful when leveling but unfortunately they're not available during the leveling experience um, because the first time you can get them is in the har is in the is in maps when you unlock the harbinger encounters you'll also get access to horizon orbs which transform one map into another map of the same tier uh, very similar to the alternate of the same tier option here, except they allow further crafting. And you'll also get Harbinger Orbs, so there's the Horizon Orbs and there's the Harbinger Orbs, which do the same thing except they increase the tier of the map by one, and they have a 20% chance, I believe 20%, I could be wrong on that front, but it's something of that ballpark, to transform the map into a unique map called the Beachhead which is basically an enormous source of XP, um, a whole bunch of Harbingers to go around and fight, and then a massive end fight where you fight six Harbingers all, all in a row. In any case, the Harbinger option uh, adds a lot more monsters to, the, to a map, and those monsters can drop maps. Uh, so that's, what, uh, that's a lot of its appeal to players, and it's four Chaos Orbs to run, but you won't get it until quite late in the league. And finally, we have Beyond. Beyond, you will encounter occasionally on maps. When, you, uh, when you're rolling your maps, you'll get a mod that says uh, slaying monsters nearby to each other can cause monsters to spawn from Beyond. What the Beyond does, this is a callback to Beyond League, which is quite some time ago. It was a hardcore-only league uh, several years ago, and it had very, very dangerous bosses that could spawn when you killed a group of monsters in, pro in close proximity. Uh, at the time of the Beyond League, these monsters were terrifying. You, when you kill a monster with Beyond active, it has a chance, I believe 20%, but I could be wrong on that front, uh, to leave a small drop of ready, ready brown, uh, I think people often call them um, either failed portals or Beyond Poo, various other names for them. These little 
These little blobs don't stand out very much on the screen, but if you get four of them to spawn close to each other, uh, those four portals will disappear and four monsters will spawn. Uh, three of them will be magic monsters with considerably higher hit points than, uh, than most magic monsters in the zone, and one will be a rare monster with, again, massively escalated hit points. You'll fight these off, but if instead of getting four, uh, if instead of killing four in close proximity, you kill 16 in close proximity, uh, in, you will spawn additionally a what's called a beyond boss. These are, there are several different unique monsters. Uh, very, um, Haas, the Unrelenting Frost, Bummoth, the Shifting Darkness, Efferage, the, the Cackling Sky, and most deadly of all, Abaxoth, uh, the End of All That Is who is very, very rare. I believe Abaxeth might be 50 times rarer than, than any of the other individual Beyond bosses. I've encountered him about five times uh, in the time I've been playing. These bosses are generally... All, uh, at the time that they launched, they had tremendous hit points, they were very hard to kill, and they would be, a, they would be something that you had to take seriously when it spawned. Characters are a lot more powerful now, and so Beyond bosses can often be burst down in just a couple of seconds, or even um, by a lot of builds can even one-shot them. But they will generally have hit points that will be on par with a map boss in most zones, and they will they put up quite a fight. They have some devastating attacks. Uh, Tezatosh, the Hungering Flame, will summon a Flame Blast that can in, that can instantly kill you if it crits. Uh, in most zones, and will also inflict a devastating ignite. Um, Haas, the unrelenting frost, will spam cold attacks that will try to fr chill and freeze you, and will put you in a world of hurt. If you get frozen in one of them, then you can get um, stuck by more of them. Efferage, the cackling sky, will strike you with uh, lightning that will then, that if it hits hard enough, um, can shock you so badly that other attacks stun you. And it's easy to get uh, it's easy to get killed by him if he stun locks you that way. Naam the Bending Stone is all about physical attacks. He's probably the weakest of the, of the six. Uh, Bummoth the Shifting Darkness does a few chaos attacks, but has a devastating Vile Detonate Dead that is uh, certainly um, resulted in a lot of very funny hardcore character death videos going onto YouTube back a few years ago. And Abaxeth, the end of all it is pretty much has all of the skills of all of the other ones uh, in one devastating package that is fast acting, very, very fast acting in fact, uh, summons enormous amounts of, of additional monsters around him, and is generally just an absolute terror to fight. Beyond is used by players that are, that typically by players that have access to the Headhunter belt that I mentioned before. Um, Headhunter gives you the mods of all of the rare monsters that you kill. And Beyond will add a staggering amount of additional rare monsters onto the map. They aren't there immediately, they're there when you kill four monsters in close proximity, that'll spawn a rare. You'll then kill that, you'll get its mods. You'll then kill a bunch of other monsters nearby, they will all fall over dead, spawning new rares. You'll kill them quickly because you're so juiced up with all, with all your headhunter buffs. And pretty quickly, you'll become a walking avalanche of death, slaughtering everything throughout the map with stats that are unfathomably high. It's, it's certainly not unheard of to see people posting screenshots where their life-based character, so a character that might, have, might normally run around with 6,000 life and 2,000 energy shield, and all of a sudden they've got 21,000 energy shield because they've just got so many stacking buffs from all of these monsters. They're flying around at the speed of light, and they're just destroying everything that they touch. Um, that's the main appeal to the Beyond to the Beyond mod. Uh, it is also being changed in this league. It used to add 20% increased item quantity to the map, although that's actually in practice only 12% because you are giving up the ability to use this eight. You only get to choose one of these. And now it is no longer. Ha it will no longer have that 20% increased item quantity. Instead, at the moment, it is going to. Oh, sorry. The the map bosses, the monster, the bosses from the beyond, um, from the beyond mods. So characters like Hast will be able to drop maps. 
Previously, they were not able to do so. So beyond will be something that um, will be useful for people that are looking to get the most XP out of maps that they can. Uh, it, in terms of which, vi which mods you should choose, I strongly recommend that you try all of them at least once. Um, you know, just give, it, give all of them the ones that you unlock a shot. You may not get to the point of unlocking Harbinger Beyond an Elder, but you sh you'll probably unlock most of the rest. Give them all a shot and see which ones you find fun. Uh, that's the first tip that I've got for them. Secondly, uh, if one of them is just an enormous, is just a blast to play, like maybe you find that um, that nemesis monsters are just exciting to fight, then use them all. Then use those more. But in terms of the strategy, the second video is going to go through it a bit more. I would suggest that you make extensive use of alternate of the same tier uh, while you are just trying to work your way up to having about a hundred different maps completed on the atlas. Once you've got that, start using shaped tier 1 to 5 or shaped tier 1 to 10, uh, whichever one you can afford to use, and sorry, whichever one you've got access to, and use these in order to to consume your less important maps, your less valuable maps like your tier 4s, your, your tier 5s and your tier 10s, and to generate much higher tier zones. You can then run those, and those higher tier maps will drop you. You know, will drop you all of the tier 13, 14, 15, 16 maps that you're going to want for the league. And you can sell your spare ones as well to other players. Otherwise, never feel bad about using none of these mods. Uh, but also consider Nemesis for the for the chance to get a headhunter. This is very much buying a lottery ticket, but if you run enough maps with it, the odds will start adding up to being a bit more favourable. Or consider running uh, with any of the... Um, but, oh, consider running with Harbinger or Breach, which just adds so many monsters onto the map, all of which can drop maps. So that's the introductory side. There is one last thing I'll add, and that is that if you put in a map that is corrupted, so a map that has had a Val Orb used on it, you stick one of them into the map device, you will find that the prices will go up, 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 up. Instead of costing uh, three Chaos Orbs to use Fortune Favors the Brave, it will start costing you three Chaos plus three Val Orbs. And the same will be the case for any others. Basically, every Chaos Orb will be replaced by one Chaos plus one Val. So, to shape a Tier 9 Corrupted map will cost you six Chaos and six Val. To Elder a tier seven a tier seven corrupted map will cost you 15 chaos and 15 val orbs in most cases this is not worth doing um so we'll get to the exceptions in the second video on the strategies for using these but i would suggest as a newer player that you choose one either you corrupt your maps or you uh use zana's map map uh, mods to amplify them and that's going to be your choice you'll be able to just experiment with both, find out which one works better for you. Anyways, let me know if this has been useful, and if you want some more on the strategy, come back for the second video, which should be up in the next couple of hours.